We all love shiny Pokemon, but what if they could evolve into unique evolutions? That's the premise here, pretty simple. But I thought this next video could have a fun twist. What if instead of just rolling a randomizer to choose which shiny we get, what if I put my feet to the ground and find my own dang shinies? That's why I'm going to the beautiful low frame rate fields of Paldea to find shinies to evolve. Each shiny I find, I'll draw an Evo for, but there's gonna be a lot of drama, action, and possibly romance. No, no romance, but it's gonna be fun. Let's just jump straight into our first hunt. I started where all good shiny hunts should start, at the beginning. I was ready with my team of shinies, ready to hunt the shinies. Anarchus, the shiny chandelier, my ace. Chestnut, the shiny Palmot. Maisie, the pink Ampharos. Ivy, my daughter. Mystery, my Mudsdale. And finally, Guild, my golden Altaria. This was my DLC team that I went into the DLCs with as well. I went into this with the idea that I'd just run around until I ran into a shiny. Oh, how naive. There was no sandwiches, nothing. And so I started to search. I went across fields of green, up mountains, down mountains, across seas, even to the depths of Area Zero itself. And absolutely nothing. I even went to Blueberry Academy and had this abomination called food to up my chances of finding something. But alas, I found nothing. The first day came and went, and I was left shinyless and devoid of hope. Day two, I started off by searching again and even did a bit of anger therapy by slaughtering masses of gulpin, hoping maybe one would pop up as a shiny. I would be honest here, I may have seen one and accidentally opened a picnic instead of saving. Oops. But even still, the gods of Paldea gave no cares and so I was about to give up. The shinies were not coming and they were all laughing at me from beyond their shiny veil. That is, until I was near Artisan. Oh, Artisan, because they make art. Heh. <laughs> Funny. And a group of Stunky were walking around. I hadn't connected online in a while, as they were still running around Paldea. And out of nowhere... Here comes the they appeared. Hello. Now, I want to pause for a second here, because Artisan has a zone area that's pretty dang close to where I was. If a Pokemon walks into it, they despawn. If I walk into it, everything despawns. And boy howdy, was I a little too close to this. But I did it. My first shiny was a Stunky and I called it Stanko. I think you'll find my naming conventions aren't the most normal, but look at him, he's perfect. And he's a stubborn boy. Let's jump into creating a shiny evolution for Stanko. This is a Stink Badger. Dear God. There's more. No. So the Stink Badger is closely related to skunks. Not much on them if their Wikipedia page is anything to go by, but I thought it was the perfect idea for creating a new Evo for Stunky. When I look at that shiny for Stunky, I thought that it'd be cool if instead of it being about toxic gases, it's more about stinky toxic sludge, as those colors just remind me of some kind of sludge. The actual body here would be fairly similar to Skun Tank in design, but instead of that hair tail mohawk thing going on, its main draw would be that their face would look a bit like a shotgun mixed with a gas mask, an overall hazmat suit, ready to just blast some horrid toxic sludge at anyone they see. While the stink badger also has the stink glands in the bootay, Scum Tank doesn't really follow a similar idea with its tail holding the blaster, so I thought this would also be okay. Another thing I wanted was to give it some markings on the side that would actually be like little membranes that would give you a peek into the sludge beneath. They would expand and contract with the amount of goo it's ready to blast out for a shotgun sneeze. This is honestly one of my favorite designs I've made, even if they are a little strange looking. But hey, look at this stink badger and tell me this isn't just a freak on its own. Stingery, the Stink Badger Pokemon, a Poison and Ground type, evolves from Shiny Stunky at level 34 while holding Black Sludge. Stingery is seldom seen Pokemon that live deep within Stinky Burrows, 
When they come out, they start spreading toxic sludge wherever they go. The membranes on the side of their bodies expand as they produce more and more sludge. When ready, they fire it out of their nostrils like a cannon, coating massive areas with the toxic substance. Stingery and Skuntank get along well and will form brutal packs together to hunt. Stingery have the ability Stench and Liquid Ooze. It took me this long to find the first shiny and I was worried. See, normally my luck for these things are quite good. I just run into them randomly as I'm running about the overworld. I went looking around Castle Royale Lake for mainly a shiny Tatsugiri or the ever elusive shiny Slowpoke. I'd even take a shiny Tropius, and I kept saying I'd take anything, just give me a shiny Starly for all I care, something, anything. And then as I was traveling around, I saw in a sea of blue, a little green thing, oh, and immediately you just mouth. know everything was ready to go wrong. I dashed towards this green mouse straight into the waterfall, and like the Emperor's new groove, you know what, I'll just let you watch. Yep, straight to a black screen, where would we go? Would we find ourselves within the dark depths forever? Show up far away with no shiny to find? Or within Melanie's sweet and bru- Don't let your kids watch Luckily it. I was returned to the same spot then, so I did the exact same thing as before. But this time I decided I'd instead go on the offensive and throw my Pokeball directly at that idiot. And with a bit of a worrisome trial, our next shiny was found. Vermincelli the Shiny Marrow. I know the names make no sense, but it looks like a Vermincelli, okay? Marrow is a mouse. Makes sense. That evolves into a rabbit. Yeah, alright. Reading up, I learned that Marrow and Shiny has a lot of connections to Marumo balls, which honestly makes so much sense, and I thought it was a great basis for an evolution. But... A green mouse, it looks a little irradiated. And you know, the idea of lab rats and even further than that, scientists using mRNA to make mice glow by using the genes of a firefly. It was a cool basis for a more weird and twisted evolution. Perfect for a Pokemon whose name was Vermincelli. A giant sort of fluffier looking ball of a marrow, much, much bigger, but with a bit of a weird look to it. It had glowing spots and a bit of weird mutations. I like the idea of giving it a water molecule on this looking ear, add a bit of a symmetry to the design to really just help show that nasty mutant boy. So I thought it'd be fun to show it being a marimo ball of its own and have it so that the marrow side and the ball tail kind of interchange between one floating and the other being on the ground, much like how marimo balls do. And I even decided to add a funny little pattern of fluff to the ball to make it look almost like a face. Maybe a second Marie Merrill is growing from it. The name Marie Merrill follows the normal conventions of the Marrill's line naming, but, but it's also named this because I always think Marie Merrill in my head when I hear Marrill's cry in game. <laughs> Marie Merrill, the moss ball Pokemon, a grass and water type. Marie Merrill evolves from shiny Marrill when exposed to a leaf stone. Marie Merrill spend their time in water to absorb liquid and strengthen their bodies. Both their bodies and tail balls can become large, squishy masses filled with liquid, allowing them to remain on land for extended periods without needing water. Special bioluminescent glands in their skin signal to other Marimaril where grooming or other care is needed. Wounded Marimaril will be surrounded by their brethren, who will take care of them until they feel better. Marimaril have the abilities thick fat and immunity. I swallowed my pride for the last shinies of the video and decided to look towards my picnic basket for answers. And I decided it was time to make a sandwich and just go for it. But what type was the most pressing matter, as that was going to be the primary type of these next Pokemon? I settled on one of my favourite typings, the Psychic type, as it was going to mean I'd get to track down one of my faves, and that's Slowpoke. So I made the most unappealing dog water sandwich that anyone has ever seen. What I didn't understand was the fact that Slowpoke was one of those wonderful shinies that are in fact almost exactly the same as the regular version, and Varsai had to resort to counting. Ugh. If you didn't know, Scarlet and Violet only shows 15 Pokemon at a time. But yeah, 15 Pokemon, and if there's a 16th, there is a shiny there. And this is the only way I could hunt this unshiny shiny. 
After much picnic resets and nearly missing it, I ran into this. And I gotta just run around for a bit, not knowing if this is exactly what it was. And even make it in cars check for me. Does this look like the face of a shiny to you? You even see I attempt to try and get rid of it. So meet Spiffy, the shiny slowpoke. Isn't she a beauty? Let's get straight into the shiny. This was the hardest to do. The shiny is not distinct. It was hard to find a solid concept for it. Until I took a look at the Pokemon that loves Slowpoke more. Shelda. Shiny Shelda is orange and is bling bling. So it gave me the idea of what if shiny Sheldas were just so picky they only went for shiny Slowpoke. And you get a bougie Slowpoke Evo. Who's only in it for the money, and one worthy of the spiffy nickname. I thought it'd be cool to have this ultra smug slowpoke with a bit more personality, but had Shelder evolve into it becoming this almost business suit like attire that doubles as a defensive clam armor for slowpoke. This let me also work around with the teeth making a tie pattern with the negative space. But where's the money? It's a shiny. It needed to be greedy. So I thought it'd be funny if this Pokemon produced pearls that it'd lug around and probably smack people around with in its attack animation, but would never part with them unless it's made a new one. Where do the pearls come from, you ask? Never ask how the sausage is made, never! I didn't much like the first iteration, and you'll see that I actually change it quite a few times. This was just a challenge overall, but you know what they say, that's slow biz, baby! <laughs> Slowbiz, the Pearl Horde Pokemon, a rock and water type. Evolves from Shiny Slowpoke at level 37 while holding a big pearl. Only Shiny Shelder are interested in Slowpoke, and when one bites Slowpoke's tail it evolves into this curious and haughty form. It creates pearls that it covets so dearly that it almost never lets go of them, even though it uses them for wild bludgeoning attacks. It uses its pearls to trade with other Pokemon, only when Slowbiz is certain it will be a worthy trade. Slowbiz has the ability good as gold. Riding off the high of shiny Slowpoke, I had some time on my sandwich to hunt down another psychic type Pokemon, and I knew exactly where I'd go. Straight to the depths of Area Zero for a shiny Pokemon that it may not get to make a controversial Evo, and that's Screentail. Actually one of my fave Paradox Pokemon. I ran through Area Zero with hope in my heart. Little did I know that there was another problem that would arise. And that was this thing, Giraffarig and Frig Giraffe, deciding to destroy my fun by taking up half the spawns. I actually found a random Giraffarig shiny during my actual playthrough of Scarlet that would be on my team along with my shiny Kilowattrel, so I already had one. Finally, as I was making my way to the main cave, to where the real meaty Screamtail spawns were, I got this thing, this dang blue-nosed Giraffarig, Decide to spawn. And hey, I wasn't gonna look a shiny blue nose gift giraffe in the mouth, as it meant I got to now make an Evo for one of my faves, Giraffe Rig. So meet Bluey, the Giraffe Rig. Creative, I know. But even better, it had a mark, a dozy mark for catching it in the evening. So now it's Bluey, the dozy. Yay! I didn't want to just make another weird giraffe and call it a day, but what I did want to do is change the species completely. Do a bit of a remoraid to Octillery, well, sort of. I wanted to rep my favourite blue nose character in media, Chopper, and create a blue nose reindeer evolution for Giraffe Rig. Something real weird and make a psychic ice type Evo for it. I love Furig Giraffe, so I decided to follow the sort of head chompy idea, but make it instead of becoming a kind of full hood. The horns now curl up into multiple chomp growths that each had a mind of its own. If this Pokemon had an attack animation, it would death charge and all of them would chomp down in unison. I went with a sort of mix of furry giraffe and Standler for the face here, to get closer to the reindeer look, and Des wanted to have a more front-loaded design, keeping the rest of the design simple going further from the face. One fun little fact that I noticed after finishing this design was the smaller, less developed faces look like that one bubble thing from the Amazing Digital Circus. I honestly think this design slaps, and it's kind of funny that all of my shiny evolutions for my team ended up looking kind of weird and freaky, 
but I love them all. They're all my children. Rainier. The blue nose Pokemon, an ice and psychic type, evolves from shiny giraffe rig when exposed to an ice stone. Rainier live high up on frosty mountains and avoid human contact, making sightings a rarity. Each nodule on their horns has a small mind of its own, and they are constantly breaking off, falling, and regrowing. Due to their horns, Rainier must consume large amounts of food to nourish themselves. A herd of Rainier can easily strip whole mountain forests of foliage, but fortunately their excrement helps quickly regrow any lost vegetation. Rainier have the abilities Kudchu and Slush Rush. With Giraffe Rig captured, I used the last few minutes of hunting to try and track down Screamtail. Alas, it could not be found, and I soon saw Garganackles and Great Tusk galore. I wanted that Screamtail, and so I used two of my four Herba Mystica leftovers and went straight back into that Area Zero, because I love shinies and I want more! I ran as fast as I could straight down to the large open area, and went around, then around, then around, this was the least eventful of the shinies I went after this time, as it just going forwards and backwards. Again, soon, I found her. A creepy looking red-eyed caveman vampire thing? With hair tail? I just love this thing. Meet our last shiny friend of the video, Mavis Dracula, who is about to get their first ever evolution. But only if they're shiny. This one may have been cheating a little bit, as I thought it'd be fun if the shiny version actually got the express permission to evolve into a paradox version of Wigglytuff. Kind of. But have it keep the shiny colours and definitely those piercing red eyes. I wanted to keep the caveman idea here as well as giving it even more tails. If you can even call them that. This would actually be more like a vampirish cape in the Evo. They could also be moved about of their own volition, like strange creepy little grabby tendrils. Maybe even moving about like Doc Ock on them. I also wanted to give it a comically big bone for it to be able to give the big on got bonk to enemies. Wigglytuff has a good design and especially shape design so I didn't want to change that too much. Instead adding to it with some fun extra shapes much like how Screamtail does it as well. This does make me think that maybe I should do Paradox Evos and Prevos video at some point down the line. But for now I meet Screamtail's new evolution. Wailing Fang, the Paradox Pokemon, a Psychic and Fairy type. Evolves from Shiny Screamtail at level 45 while holding a thick club. It seems that Screamtail, which come into contact with certain tools, evolve into the smarter and more capable Wailing Fang, who always carry their large bone club to use in any situation. Wailing Fang have a curious need for blood and prefer to drain their foes of blood instead of eating their flesh sometimes even keeping Pokemon around to feed on in a parasitic relationship. Each of their tails is muscular and can move independently, and they are even used as a means for the Pokemon to walk. Wailing Fang has the ability Protosynthesis. And here we are, the shinies of the video. I probably could have done another for a full team, but Anarchus was too keen to help me. Stanko, the shiny Stunky. Vermincelli, the shiny Marrow. Spiffy, the shiny slowpoke. Bluey, our little mistake. And finally Mavis, the shiny screamtail. A good team of lads and ladettes and I guess non-binaries if I ever did see it. But it wasn't over, no my no. With plenty of time left on my sandwich after the screamtail hunt, I left off on a journey to the beautiful lands of Kitakami on the search for my next shiny. But that's all I'm gonna give you for now. If this video goes well, then this journey shall definitely continue. So how'd you enjoy the video? Make sure to comment below your thoughts on the designs, and if you want a continuation. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this around so I know you enjoyed it, and if I get enough love on it, I'll definitely know to make more. Despite all the challenges, it was fun to shiny hunt for a reason. Get some delicious shinies as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.